Hello viewers, it's Josie. Welcome back to Eclectic Movie Reviews and Updates. And on Monday night, my brother and I saw Denis Villeneuve's adaptation of Frank Herbert's classic novel Dune. Well, Dune Part 1. This adaptation of Dune was outstandingly out of this world. It was the best first half of a movie I've ever seen. This is what, of course I'm hyperbolically speaking, but this is what a blockbuster sh should be. For those of you who don't know the story of Dune, um, I mean, I would recommend seeing Dune before watching this video. I mean, you don't have to. I won't give any major spoilers away. Um, uh, but, like, in order to, like, full... I'm not going to give any spoilers away. I would just recommend, like, re in order to have a full appreciation of the video, you might want to see the movie first. But for those of you who haven't seen it yet and who aren't familiar with the story of Dune, I'm going to read the back of the book case. Well, book cover. Here is the novel that will forever be considered a triumph of the imagination. Set on the desert planet Arrakis, Dune is the story of the boy Paul Atreides, who would become the mysterious man known as Muad'Dib. He would avenge the traitorous plot against his noble family. I would bring to fruition humankind's most ancient and unattainable dream. Anyway, as I watched it for the first time in IMAX and the second time on HBO Max, uh, it felt like something my brother and I would watch as little kids. I certainly want to show my kids Dune when they're old enough. Now, there are just so many great things to discuss about this movie, but if I went to all those details, the video would be the length of the movie itself, if not longer. That said, I'm going to pinpoint the five aspects I love most about it. And, um, it's only, the, the movie's only based on the first half of the book. Um, and, uh, I'm not gonna read the excerpts, but obviously can't really see the words, but, uh, it's about this this much. This, this much. And then I get this half. <laughs> you get the idea. <laughs> the second half will be part two. Okay. Reason number one. It is very faithful to the novel. Not only does it follow the story super closely, but also the atmospheric tone of the novel. Greg Frazier's muted tone cinematography captures the bleakness of Arrakis, Caladan, and Getty Prime with a color palette of black, gray, blue, green, and a hint of orange. These colors correspond to the melancholic mood, melancholic mood of the book series, um, si since um, uh, um, past the first book. It, um, from what I know, it plays out like one elongated Shakespearean tragedy. Uh, for the grim wasteland and futuristic setting Dune has, the production design and set decoration are jaw-droppingly beautiful. I could make a whole video listing all of my favorite props. Shout out to production designer Patrice Vermette, as well as set designers Richard Roberts and Zuzana Sigbos. The desert is obviously an important setting and symbol in the novels, and Villeneuve and team shooting in the actual Jordanian desert where they, I believe they shot Lawrence of Arabia, brings the desert sands of Herbert's pages to life. Moving on to number two, the performances. Timothy Chalamet is the perfect Paul Atreides. With how good he was in this, knowing that the second half of the novel is dramatically chaotic, I can only imagine how he will shine performance-wise in part two. Re Rebecca Ferguson as Lady Jessica Trades is also fantastic. Jason Momoa is quite humorous as the badass warrior Duncan Idaho, but he he actually does give some real acting. Uh, Stellan Star Skarsgård is menacingly good as Baron Harkonnen. Um, and I also really like David Desmalchian as Piter. David Desmalchian has had quite a year with with this and the Suicide Squad. Oh, Polka Dot Man. Uh, 
Zendaya, for the small role she has, is supremely magnetic. In spite of her limited screen time, her character has a major impact in the narrative. And more importantly, she'll be a major key player in Dune Part 2. Um, in an interview a while ago, Denis Villeneuve said that she will basically, she'll be the female protagonist. Um, reason number three, the visual technicals. As I stated earlier, I can write a whole costume laundry list of all the art amazing visuals. It has some of the best usage of practical effects I have ever seen. Seeing on IMAX made it extra immersive, especially with the surround sound. That's why you need to see this movie on the biggest screen possible. If you can! That's become a cliche hook line when promoting this movie, but it's true! The film really is a transcendental experience. Other eye-popping visuals were Paul's dreams masterfully edited by Joe Walker, who edited Villeneuve's previous films Sicario and Blade Runner 2049. He also edited 12 Years a Slave. The dream sequences, according to editor Joe Walker, were one of the hardest things to edit. This brings me to my point about how part of why this movie works so well is the editing. The pacing is great. The film takes its time in introducing us to the Duneverse. In an interview with Matt Neglia from the Next Best Picture podcast, Joe Walker stated that it took 20 months to edit the film. He added that a blessing in disguise from COVID was that he and Denis Villeneuve got to work on post-production for a longer period to perfect the film. Reason number four, the auditory technicals. Hans Zimmer, you did good, my friend, turning down Tenet to score Dune. I love Tenet, and Ludwig Göransson did a great job scoring that, but the score for Dune transcends music itself. It's career-defining and Oscar-worthy for sure. The music and sound design blend superbly well, as they did in Blade Runner 2049. The score here sounds like a mix of Gladiator, Blade Runner 2049, and a wee bit of Prince of Egypt. It fits the narrative flow of the story and matches the epic shots and set pieces. While the score and sound design are excellent, there are a few brief moments of silence that are equally beautiful. And I think in an interview, um, I think it was, didn't you, it was, it would think it was Timothy Chalamet who said that um, one thing he loved about shooting in the desert was the, was the silence. Like, like, I guess a mindful experience, if you will. And then fifth and final reason, the directing of Denis Villeneuve. Not only do we see Denis Villeneuve's love of the source material through his realized vision and attention to detail, but also his love for epic cinema. His cinematic influences are there. Baron Harkonnen getting out of the bathtub is a nod to Apocalypse Now. The shots of the desert are reminiscent of Lawrence of Arabia. There are a couple of shots of, Sh of Chani during Paul's dream sequences that remind me of how in Gladiator there's Im some images of Maximus's wife and son in the afterlife. Hans Zimmer's music only further reminds me of that. All in all, nobody else could have done what Denis Villeneuve did here. That's why I think he 1000% deserves a Best Director nomination at this year's Oscars. It basically deserves all the technicals. <laughs> Um, now, I would hold off on giving it a win for picture and director, though. I would save that for part two, if it's a masterpiece on par with The Return of the King, which I think it has potential to be. I trust Denis Villeneuve and co. As far as nitpicks go, I did feel like a couple scenes were missing. It felt like it could have been a, a bit longer. Of course, after the end, I wanted more, but thank the Lord, correction. Thank the Muad'Dib. We are getting a sequel coming October 20th, 2023. I'm, that's why I'm, I'm a bit for, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of forgiving of that. Also, I'm sure there'll be a couple of deleted scenes on the Blu-ray. Uh, Denis Villeneuve and editor Joe Walker claim that a director's cut won't be released. 
yet as my one of my friends pointed out uh, about the Snyder Cut, they said that would never be released, but the rest is history. I mean, Denis Villeneuve, though, I don't, um, says he does see, seems pretty sincere about him not doing director's cuts for his movies. Okay, I'm not necessarily asking for a director's cut to be released, but rather, like, an option on the Blu-ray to watch the movie with just some additional footage. Not, it doesn't have to be a lot. Uh, since they may be saving some of that footage for part two. I think Joe Walker discussed that in an interview he had with Next Best Picture. I know that the narrative does not feel 100% complete with this ending alone. However, I still find the ending epic. The comparison to The Lord of the Rings, Fellowship of the Ring is being thrown around a lot with regards to the ending. Uh, but it's... It's true. While the story is clearly not over, you know that there are more exciting things to come. That being said, the movie leaving you hungry for more is a further testament of its quality because had the film not been so investing, you wouldn't have wanted to see more in the first place. Denis Villeneuve originally wanted to shoot Dune 1 and 2 back to back, but Warner Brothers thought it would be too risky considering that it's heady sci-fi and... Villeneuve's previous film, Blade Runner 2049, though critically acclaimed, flopped financially. Nevertheless, Villeneuve said in an interview with Christopher Nolan that in hindsight, he's glad he didn't shoot them back to back because the production process, though rewarding, was extremely exhausting and didn't know how Peter Jackson did it with Lord of the Rings. Would it have been great to see Dune Part 2 right after Part 1? Of course! <laughs> I... I can't wait for it. I want it now. Even so, as much as we all want our content to be content with our lives, we have to consider the mental and physical health of our creators. Peter Jackson said that shooting all three Lord of the Rings films back to back took a toll on him. Don't forget everything going on with IATSE, international stage and theatrical employees, uh, or theatrical and stage employees. I, I could be saying the acronym wrong. Uh, I Oh, it's interna International Theater and Stage Employees, something like that. But that's material for a whole separate video. Although it sucks that we have to wait another two years for the second half of the story, I'm glad that Villeneuve and co are taking their time to give the best treatment they can to a text so that's so dense, such as Dune. And lastly, Dune is an important story to tell right now with how it touches on the dangers of political greed, warfare, and environmental destruction. Author Frank Herbert has stated that spice is meant to be a metaphor for oil. That is definitely the case, but I can, but I can also see parallels between spice and pharmaceuticals and opioids, given that <laughs> spice is meant to have healing power. I mean, uh, I don't know what Frank Herbert or his son Brian would have to say about that. But that concludes my review of Dune Part 1. If you like this video and want to check out more poetry and movie-related stuff, you can click the like button and subscribe. You can also follow me on Instagram at Eclectic Movie Updates or Positive Poems. I'm currently working on a Dune spoof for my Google Blogger page involving art puns and contemporary political satire. And here's some of the art I made for it. Paul Art Trades instead of Paul Atreides. He see like some uh like the mold deeb instead of the moi deeb. Mold deeb kinda like um uh you know like clay. Uh Paul sand paintings, sand sand art, you know. Crap. I'm trying to come up with a good art pun for Kwisatz Haderach. Uh, the best I could come up with right now is Crafty Arts Handy Hand, craft, or I also thought of cra Crafty Arts Handy Man. Uh, it'll come. I mean, let me know what you guys think below. Uh, here's another one. Chalky instead of Chani. Chalky lines. <laughs> Chalk art exhibit. Drawing 
chalk art on the desert rocks. You can see that's the desert mouse from the movie, which, which was adorable. Uh, Bene Gesserit Knitting and Crochet Club at the Bene Gesserit Knit School, hosted by Lady Jessica. Follow her on Etsy. <laughs> My mom has an Etsy page, so I was kind of inspired to do that. Well, uh, please note that this spoof will not be accurate to the source material. It's meant to just be a joke. Uh, thanks for watching. Let the spice continue to flow. Goodbye for now.